Hi there. Now that we have completed some of the basic essential informational videos, this channel will now begin its transition in becoming a pain medical information channel. Now, personal injury is a key component of any pain management practice or pain management in general. Now, have you ever been involved in a personal injury accident such as an auto accident, motor vehicle, truck, car, bike, whatever, or probably a slip and fall? And what do you do if you are still conscious and somewhat functionally independent, but probably confused, anxious, in pain, and probably scared like hell? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be answering some of those questions. I'll be right back. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Dr. D. Terrence Foster. If this is the first time that you're joining me, let me just extend to you a very warm welcome to you. Wherever you are in the world, it's indeed a pleasure to have you. And I want you to know that on this channel, we focus on simplifying medical issues for everyone, particularly those who may have felt left out for whatever reason. This is your channel. Consider subscribing. It is free and we produce a new video every week. So let's begin to talk about personal injury. What is personal injury? Personal injury is a legal term for an injury to the body, mind, or emotion instead of to properties or whether that property be your property or other people's property. So that is essentially what personal injury is. It's very simple, very straightforward. Once you have injury to the body, mind, or emotion, then that is personal injury. Now, what I'll be doing, I'll be showing you first a video of part of a presentation I gave to a group consisting of attorneys, medical doctors, chiropractors, and other medical providers. I hope that you will get something from this video and I'll finish up by giving you a summary of what is important when you're involved in a personal injury. Let's stay tuned to this. Well, 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 good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, some of you have seen this brochure. Um, it says personal injury solutions. And it's all about me. And here's what I'm doing. <laughs> now, why would I do that? I'll do that because very often we'll send representatives to people's office. They'll go there and almost always about 95% of our brochures will end up somewhere. <laughs> That's normal. That tonight is different. We have about 50 people who are here tonight. And what we're hoping for is maybe about 10 or 5 people who would look at us and say, you know what, we're going to give those guys a try. We're not sure about them. We have our regular people we normally refer to, which is normal. We're not asking you to change from what you're doing. We're not saying, don't refer to John or Mary who you've been referring to for years. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying to you is just seeing a different side. And here's why. Um, I've been practicing for about 20 years or more. Not a long time. There are people I've met a gentleman here who've been practicing for about 30 years or 40 years. So. Longevity doesn't always do it, but it's important sometimes. But here's what I'll tell you. Um, we run, I run two clinics. One is a licensed pain clinic, and one is a personal injury clinic. And all we do is take leans, nothing else. Just leans, leans, leans all day. Which means that sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. So that's a normal part of it. And um, we see patients probably on the same day they come in without, some patient will see without an attorney's leave. Um, if we know the attorney and have a good relationship with them, it's so much easier to do that because then, I would say, oh, you know, that's uh, attorney John. I mean, he's been good to us, we've been good to him. We don't have to have the lead on the same day that this patient comes in because we don't want to see these patients running around to the emergency room and spending hours. So we will take them in even without an attorney's leave. So that's something to uh, remember. The other thing that I want to tell you, I'm board certified in pain medicine and physical medicine rehabilitation. What that means 
is that we have a whole repertoire of things to offer. So it's not patient coming in and we uh, give them a little medicine, send them out. We can give you solid uh, documentation that if and when you go to trial, you will need that. Um, that is important. You don't want to just send your patient to anywhere or to anyone. You want somebody who could be there who could say, look, I can make a difference. I have been in deposition. I could sign or sit in front of an attorney and feel comfortable doing it because that's important. So it's not so much, well, whoever will take that. So that's important to understand. Also, I noticed that there are a lot of chiropractors here and always see pain, I mean, uh, personal injury as a chiropractic work. So we're entering into the chiropractic work. And I want to say I've worked with chiropractors for a year and most of them are good ones. So most of you are here, I'm going to assume you're all good ones. <laughs> right. But here's something that I want to point out. Um, inadvertently, sometimes there are few, very few chiropractors who believe that you know they should just work with the patient and then send them when maybe it's six months, three months down the road. But I always uh, believe that a better way to do this, if you know that you have a physician that you can trust, try to get that physician involved early so that um, when that patient has a significant injury, you're not waiting to the last minute to say, you know what, oh, they have a torn meniscus, they have multiple discs, and we've been treating them for three months and they have been for now what? Then you send them to a physician and then we're looking and say, well, you know, we could have we could have done a lot more. It doesn't mean that once they come to us, we're gonna take them. We don't have the time to do that. Most of the patients that we see in our practice, um, if they're not getting any treatment, we may see them two or three times and not maybe if, if they're getting epidurals, um, they may be there, they may get one epidural, two epidural, or maybe three, depending on how significant they are. But if you have a patient that has a significant injury, don't hesitate to have a medical doctor involved. It doesn't have to be me, but always do that. And here's why for those of the attorney inside here, you should know that. If all you do to your patient is order tests and chiropractic care, as good as it, it doesn't matter how good the chiropractic care, is then all you're looking at is soft tissue injury. Now, that patient may have an MRI which has lots of bulges, but you know what? Those adjusters are gonna say, well, what treatment did you do? You can say, well, I did chiropractors for four months. You are almost guaranteed that you're gonna get a very small settlement. Treatment is important. It's important to have treatment by people who are qualified. And I mentioned to you that I'm board certified in those things, which means anything spinal we do, epidural injection, um, spinal cord stimulator, of course, none of our, almost none of our personal injury patients will need a spinal cord. Oh, we'll get to that point, but I'm just making the point to say that we can do a whole lot for your patients. So don't, don't hesitate to, uh, again, it doesn't have to be me, it doesn't have to be Dr. Asbord, well, it could be, just make sure that you have medical doctors on board because that helps your case, it helps your bottom line. Otherwise, you'll be there, you'll be sucking a lot of 6,000, 10,000, maybe 15,000 cases because that's all you're gonna get. And sometimes some people say, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to send to that one because then they're gonna take my money away. But then you're not gonna get any money anyway. You know, so be, be wise about that and be, be knowledgeable about that and know that that is something. I don't want to take up all the time because I'm a guy who likes to talk when, when you give me a chance. <laughs> but we have a lot to talk. Some of you are here, um, see me for the first time. Darnell is my, is my representative as well as other representatives. But feel free to reach out to us. You know, our goal is to try to help you guys, try to work with you. And believe me, if, you, if the need arrives, get on the phone. My office manager is here. My uh, practice operate, operation manager is here. Get on the phone and, and talk to us. We'll talk with you. You know, I mean, sometimes it comes to settlement. We'll talk with you. We all want to get um, primary uh, thing first. Treat patient well. If you treat the patient well, you will get paid. You know, don't worry about money and all of that. You will get paid. But you think patient first. Because a lot of these patients, they just run in and they run out and they're never really treated the way that they should be treated. 
And that is, is a key factor that we believe in our practice. So if you have a patient that have an issue, call us. You know, and as again, if you can't call me, call one of our other doctors. They're great doctors out there. Thank you again for coming. This has been a pleasure for us. And I enjoy talking with you and I'd love to sit down and talk with some of you one on one because I think we're gonna have some great conversation. Thank you. Woo! Now the key component of that video that you just watched is the patient, the person who is involved. Property damage are important and yes, they must be paid for, but the key component or the key concept there is individual people getting well after sustaining a personal injury. So what do you do after a personal injury? The first thing to do is to call and report your accident to the law enforcement authority or to the police. This is very important. It documents that your injury or your accident actually occurred. So it's so important that you make that call. The second thing to do if you're able to do this is to exchange insurance information and licensing information. Um, a license of the car, driver's license, all that information needed to be taken while you can if you are capable of doing that. Also if you're capable of taking photographs then you take as many pictures of your car, of the person's car, but primarily at that time you take the other party's car, you'll always be able to take your car. In most instances, particularly if, you're, if your car is likely to be in your position. So if you have a car that is totally um, gone, then you probably want to get as much picture right there and then. If you believe you're going to be able to drive your car home and still have it, you could still try to get as much photo at the scene as you can instead of waiting until you go home. Because also, when you're taking picture at the scene, it also gives the the people who are trying to put these accidents together again they give it give them information about what might have happened where your car is positioned where the other person's uh vehicle or truck or whatever the way they're positioned now sometimes you may be able to do this other times you may not be able to do that but that is very important the other aspect of of gathering information is also identify weaknesses if you can those who may have seen the accident and you're able to get their information collect those information as well. The next thing, sometimes after an accident, some people may be confused, um, totally out of it mentally, and often is not able to give an accurate description or even recall what happened. So sometimes it's best for you not even to begin to try to do that because you may be giving information that is inaccurate. So if you're not sure what happened and you're not sure that you're up to it, then it's best not to give the information at that time. In a lot of cases, these accidents, they can be reconstructed and the information that you give may sometimes uh, be inaccurate and affect your case as well as put you at risk of being in greater trouble than you ought to be. Um, you want to be fair, you want to be a good citizen, but at the same time, you do not want to say things that you shouldn't be saying. It is often best to only give accurate information once you believe your mind is clear and you're pretty much certain about what happened. That's when it's probably better to give an information. Otherwise, it's better to wait until your mind is clear and you have a sense of what really happened. Because a lot of times, um, some people are involved in an accident and they have no idea of what happened. And you don't want to be there trying to reconstruct when you're not sure what actually happened. Next, always seek medical care if you are hurt. Now, sometimes some of these symptoms take several days before they appear. Even at that time, it is still okay for you to seek medical treatment. Do not say, well, this accident happens and I don't know what to happen. It is still okay at that time to seek medical treatment. The other thing is, where do you go for treatment? Who do you contact? Um, it's always important to contact a medical provider. This could be a medical doctor, an osteopathic doctor, a physician, or some medical care. Um, because they will be able to initially document your injury as indicated in the uh, video and provide clear sense of what happened. And if there are certain tests that need to be ordered, certain therapy, certain medication need to be prescribed, then they're going to be able to help you do that at the get-go. In addition, you're also likely to have chiropractic care or physical therapy um, for your treatment. Um, it's, in a lot of cases, 
in um, some of these minor or moderate to severe accidents, um, the need for chiropractic care or physical therapy is very important. So you will also, um, in all likelihood, if you have a significant injury, um, likely to have the need for chiropractic care or physical therapy. Now, another, a point to be made sometime is very often um, when these accidents occur, um, the victim usually ends up in the emergency room. And, that, and of course, they'll see doctors and other providers there. And then they go back home. Now, it doesn't mean that after that you cannot see a medical provider. It's still important, even after that, whether you visit the emergency room or the urgent care center, to still see your doctor if you're still hurting and still suffering. Because um, some of these cases will result in long-term suffering and you need to be in a position where you are making sure that your health care is of paramount importance and any needs that you have is addressed appropriately. So if you're suffering even after visiting the emergency room, make sure that you still see, in addition to your chiropractors, your physical therapy, make sure that you also have a medical doctor uh, who is taking care of your medical needs as well. That is so important. Next, make sure that you have a, an attorney involved in your case. A lot of these cases, you know, there are few people who believe that they could um, resolve these cases by negotiating with the insurance. That is a possibility, but it's something that I personally would not recommend because in most of those instances where the victim is trying to negotiate with the insurance company, uh, they usually end up having an unfair outcome of their case, in most cases. So I would recommend that if you're involved in a motor vehicle accident of any type or a slip and fall, speak to an attorney. It is very important that you do that so that your rights are protected and that you're treated fairly in the process. Next, report your accident to your insurance carrier. It's important that you inform them of the accident most insurance carriers will have a 24-hour time frame in which you can report your accident. Um, I mentioned at the very top that you should report this to the law enforcement. That is more important initially to make sure that your accident is documented and recorded, but you also need to report your accident to the, your insurance uh, provider within 24 hours. Um, so you don't necessarily have to do that at the scene. Sometimes you can if you are capable, but make sure that you report your accident and get your case recorded as well. Next, this is very simple and straightforward, but there are cases when some people leave the scene of an accident. So this one is never leave the scene of an accident until all the investigations are completed. Unless of course, there's a medical reason where you need to have medical treatment, that is, then that's a priority. And then you should of course be taken to um, a medical center uh, to get appropriate care but never leave a scene of an accident because it may impact the outcome of your case and may also put you in legal jeopardy. So you want to be sure that both parties that are involved are at the scene and even if things appear to be complete, make sure that it's actually whatever investigation is going to be taking place is taking place. And if, if the police or the law enforcement is called, that they're there before you leave the scene of an accident. Now, there are certain instances where it may be a, such a minor accident and you may make the judgment that, okay, this is a minor accident and you don't want to have law enforcement involved because this is maybe less than a $500 or $1,000 and you feel comfortable and it's your best judgment to do that, then go ahead and do that. But in general, what I would say, report all accidents to the law enforcement and never leave the scene of an accident until the investigation is completed. Next, this one is really important. Never get in a conflict or an argument with the persons or person that you're involved in an accident with. Because regardless of who is wrong or who is right, it doesn't matter. This, the blame will be appropriately decided at an appropriate time. So you never want to try to figure out, well, who is wrong, who is right, and try to sort it out right there on the scene because sometimes you know believe it or not there's some people out there who will not see the facts as they are and sometimes you yourself may believe that you are so right and you are not um, so there's no guarantee that you who may feel totally right that you are 
or the person may feel exactly the same way that you feel and therefore if you try to resolve um, your accident or try to resolve it on the scene of the accident then that is a bad idea and you definitely definitely do not want to do that so as you see personal injury has many facets and this is not a significant presentation in terms of the number and complexity that are involved in personal injury but um, as I said to you at the top of the video we're transitioning into a more pain management medical information channel so we'll be talking about personal injury as part of pain management we'll be talking about some of the in-depth subject related to pain management so I want you to stay tuned to this channel so I encourage you to like share and comment on the videos on this channel let us know what you're thinking about what you'd like to see share it with your friends family or anyone also subscribe to this channel it is free and when you do make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you'll always be notified each time we release a new video finally let us all remember that each of us should strive to keep a healthy mind and body thank you so much for watching